Hey everybody, it's Brian Burns and welcome to this episode of the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling podcast. Got a great topic today talking about questions and taking a very different view. We've had several episodes on questions, but I think this one is a lot of fun uh, because it's, it's really one of the key characteristics that hiring managers are looking for. Not just questioning skills, but curiosity, that natural interest in somebody else. Some people say it can't be taught. I think it can. It's not that hard. It's just a, a mindset change. And instead of you thinking just about, you know, what you want to know or what you want to say is finding out what that other person has and what you want to hear from them, what they're interested in. And uh, at the very end of this, I'll, I'll give you the magic word as far as what I found for questions. And also, make sure you check out the episode I dropped earlier this week uh, with Chad about closing the complex sale. At the very end of that episode, I described a incentive between now and the end of August, a uh, $150 bonus uh, for the winner. So check out that episode. and It takes about a minute to do. And whoever does it the best uh, between now and the end of August will win. Uh, please re- listen to that episode as a listening skill. And do not contact me asking about the rules. Now, let's get into this episode. But before we do, I want to make sure that you're checking out uh, <laughs> Discover Org. Discover Org has this pre-built database of pretty much everybody in the B2B space, no matter who you're selling to. Definitely check it out because it saves you an enormous amount of time as far as research and knowing exactly all the contact information, social links, and what they care about. So it's super powerful, very easy to use. I, I used it uh, extensively last year. Uh, to build my business. It saved me an enormous amount of time. So check it out. And it really skips that stage of having clean, correct data in your CRM. Let's get into the interview with Paul Cherry, an expert on questions. Hey, Paul, thanks for joining us today. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Oh, thank you. And um, I'm uh, president of Performance Based Results. i uh, been doing this for over 20 years and work with all types of clients from uh, 175 of the Fortune 500 companies to over a thousand small to medium sized entrepreneurial firms in the business to business arena. And my passion is all about questions that sell, asking the right questions to discover what customers are saying, what they're not saying, and really getting to the motivations, the heart of the issues. Why? So we can create value, drive value. Uh, and deliver what customers want and, and obviously get what we need. So it becomes a collaborative, successful effort for both parties. That's a little bit about me. Cool. And how'd you get into this? <laughs> I, I just been you fell into it? <laughs> <laughs> Probably like most salespeople, right? Yeah. Just Couldn't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I guess I, I look at my dad who was uh, – you know, I, I got my master's in public administration and like most folks around 23, 24 years old, I wanted to change the world. And I, was, I um, tried oh, government true. work, yeah. you know, the public sector for about six months. And I loved it. I loved the people. I loved the passion. Uh, but I realized, you know, we're seeing my dad sell and, and just my entrepreneurial spirit, I, I, I said to myself, I too got to get in sales. So I got a wonderful job opportunity with the Bell of Pennsylvania. Yellow Pages, Directory Advertising. And people are like, what? What's that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the thing today, right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody goes by the internet. But it was a wonderful profession because I got to be exposed to every type of business market from you know small startup companies, pizza places, plumbers, uh, to Fortune 500 companies. And uh, I loved it. But I did that for six years. And then, then I, you know, I always loved um, entertaining, acting, but also selling and education. I'm like, well, where can I make a living? And I just, I was attracted to training and development, but to still sell. So I started with Dale Carnegie Organization. From there, other training firms. And then eventually it was like time to get out on my own. So yeah. that's where I am today. Cool. And, and how did you decide to focus on questioning? Or is that only one of the things you focus on? Well, but that's that's a key area. Um, and it's the discovery process, and I've always been um, recognized that when it comes to engaging others. I mean, like, I was one of those um, people when I got out of college. I was incredible. Well, I was 
gifted at getting job offers. And again, it wasn't like, you know, it's not because of my intelligence or my background or, or experience, whatever, but I always had a way of, in, in a good way, um, because I'm, I'm just inquisitive by nature, that I would turn the interview around and start asking about, you know, the person interviewing me. So tell me how you got started in this business. Tell me what you see are some of the challenges and opportunities in the marketplace. Tell me what are some of the hurdles. Tell me about the ideal qualities that you look for in a candidate. What have you found so far? And all of a sudden, the press would just be pouring out all this information, giving me valuable information that what would I do with it? Sell to it. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're like, oh, you're the because I, I found out you're know, creating emotional connections with people is key. Whether it's, you know, it was 25, 30 years ago or today, that hasn't changed. So, how do I do that in the business environment? It's the same thing with customers. I want to create that emotional connection, and it's the ability to question and listen. And that's it. I think people uh, overlook questions. Um, you know, I've had a hypnotist on the podcast before. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. yeah oh. Actually, the guy that was modeled on, um, what was that movie? Tom Cruise played him. And the one with the, the frogs that rain down. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, you know Dustin Hoffman, right? The Rain Man, Rain Man. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It was... Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time. <laughs> on it, but, okay. You know, it was basically Tony Robbins uh, learned from him. Ah. Yeah. And he said, you know, questions are the only mind control capability that we have. It's, ah. like it's getting the other person to focus on what we want them to focus on. Yeah. 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 Well, I know from when I was one of those troubled teenagers, you know, going back even earlier, I had a lot of difficulty, a lot of anger built up, tension, frustration, nobody to talk to, event to. And, you know, when I was 16, uh, I uh, turned to a, a professional counselor and they used the, the psychology of questioning to really bring to the surface the issues, analyze the issues, solve the issues. So to become introspective, it's, you know, it's in our personal lives, it's in our professional lives. That process changed my life at 16 that I know in the professional world, you know, the similar pre premise will follow. So thank you for the sharing that observation. Yeah, it was Magnolia. <laughs> oh, I will look that up. I will look that up today. Thank you. Yeah. And I did it kind of for the, a different reason is that I wasn't a real good uh, presenter. So I found that by asking questions, I got the other person talking and it was just so much more powerful than me talking. Well, we want to impress every, and, and I do too. And we're all, we're all, uh, guilty of this at times because we want to build credibility, trust, rapport, and understanding that, you know, I've earned the right to be able to talk to you, to engage you. So let me tell you about me and my story. But what happens is what's supposed to be, you know, a minute or two story becomes a 10, 20, you know, presentation. And it's like, it's, it's not about me. It's all about the customer. Yeah. So how do we do that? And let's talk about how do we do that? How do you kind of, uh, you know, because today's very different than, uh, you know, probably when you and I got started in that mm -hmm. the situation questions are, aren't as welcome because everyone kind of assumes that you did your research before you talked to them. Yeah. Yeah. You let know. me, let me tell you this. So here, here's the heart of the issue because I've, I've working with 1200 organizations to date, I, not only do I do the sales training, you know, it, the classroom style face-to-face -face live and the webinars and online, but I go out in the field because I want to see, observe, and witness, you know, what salespeople are doing. And, and I will tell you, it's, it, I'm talking now about the, the individuals now and th those with five. 10, 15, 20 years plus of sale, selling experience in the business, the business, primarily consultative, complex sales, where you really got to create and sell the value because you're not the cheapest you know, pro product around there. Here's what goes on, Brian, as I analyze and assess the questions. And I don't want to knock these questions because they have a purpose um, in, in, in these conversations. But as I, 90% of the questions that sales, experienced salespeople ask, still fall into what we call those situational questions. And when I say situational, asking questions in which customers really already have an answer. I'll give you an example. You know, it's uh, and, and, and no order, no order. But, you know, what do you know about us? How can we help you? Uh, who are you currently using? Yeah. How long have you been with them? Uh, what do you like? What don't you like about them? Uh, what are you looking to spend budget-wise? Uh, what are your goals? Uh, what are you paying now? Uh, what, what if I could provide you with something better? 
for a cheaper price? Would this be interested to you? Are you looking to make a change? Are, do you make the decisions? Can I put something together? You know, may I have the business? How are we doing? You know, all these, it's, it's these questions, and again, have a purpose, but they don't, they're a me too question. Every salesperson is asking these questions. Yeah. And the problem is this is a commoditization. And when we don't, you're right, Brian, things have changed. Ironically, it's almost like everybody's, you know, too much to do and not enough time. And we try to be efficient. We want to get to the point. But the problem is, is that slow down the conversation. Ask better, more thought provoking questions that's focused on the customer, not about us. So, you know, I won't go into the detail because I, uh, but, but taking some of these questions um, and it's just tweaking it, tweaking it. For example, um, Brian, are you the decision maker? Although that is that an important question? Yeah, it is. Could it be perceived as a little offensive or sure. derogatory? Yeah. How or would we mean? salvage it? Well, yeah. you just, we talk about descriptive openers. And one example would be uh, like a describe for me. So tweaking it would just say, instead of are you the decision maker, could you describe for me your decision making process? You see, just tweaking it with descriptive openers such as describe, tell me, share with me, walk me through, help me understand, expand upon. Now, we wouldn't ask it with every question, but when, I, when I'm dealing with somebody who's a little reserved, distant, aloof, I want to engage them. Yeah. So we Those do that. great therapy questions too, aren't they? <laughs> well, here's the other problem. And it's not just situational questions, but the other problem is the majority of the questions we ask are in the present. Yeah. I mean, and I, I, you know, what's going on? Any projects you're working on? Um, how's things going? How's business? Any problems? Any concerns? You know, and then we dabble into the future. What are your goals? Now, here's the interesting thing for your audience. Rarely, if ever, do we ask questions in the past. <laughs> and you want to know why sales people, you know, tell me a little bit about how you got started in this business as you reflect on some of the previous projects you worked on. Tell me about some of the hurdles you faced in the past. What are those issues? Tell me how you tackled them. Now, there's a reason why salespeople don't like to go into the past. You want to know why? It's Not dead. relevant. Not yeah. relevant. It's dead. It's done. It's closed. I can't make money in the past. So yeah. they just spend a lot of time in the present. What do you think we do when we ask a lot of questions in the present? <laughs> we annoy. We bore. Yes, we put yeah. people to sleep. So you're right. About that, I say, I tell salespeople as we, we we look at all these questions they ask, and you know what? I, I challenge any manager, salesperson, just give me your top ten questions you ask, and that's exactly what you'll see as you go through the exercise. In no order, you know, ninety percent of them are in the present. So I tell people go more into the future. Now, a goal question: What are your goals? And eh, that's a canned question. I, I think it's more about you know, tell me about where you see you and your organization three years from now. You know, tell me where you see you and your, you know, you and your department 12 months from now. How's that compared to where you were a year ago? It's going to be a reflective question. So I'll combine something in the past, future, and the present. And you know what's beautiful about that? You get them to visualize that. You get them to, you get more aligned, I think. You do. You really do. I, I, I think, you know, too, too often I, I, I go with salespeople and I, I, I know there's a rapport building, there's an ice breaking, it's the personal stuff, you know, weather, you know, the <laughs> yeah. family, the hobby. I'm like, I'm, I'm okay with that. But sometimes, you know, there were 10, 15 minutes into that. And I'm like, oh. Enough already. Yeah. Let's move yeah. on. And, yeah. and people really want, uh, they do want connection. They really want connection and, and part of earning trust, rapport. And getting to the honesty is just to kind of shift your questions a little bit. So it's more about your customer. And then I say this because too often you'll see salespeople go through the routine of like, all right, I know you're going to ask some questions because it's kind of obnoxious to jump to the solution. But don't go to the solution prematurely until you've earned the right to understand if they're motivated, receptive, and open to buy. Or at least I should say not but open to change. So yeah. open the change. See, so yes, there is a psych psychology uh, of the process, um, and to be able to connect with people, and I, I think that's so important. 
Now, I'm sure you've looked at spin and, and spin yes. it's, yes. it's kind of been, you know, certainly one of the most popular questioning sequences. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I've liked it, uh, but I've found it to be almost inaccurate and kind of written by a researcher versus a practitioner. Yes. And I, I also happen to know that the research was fudged. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you do the math on the number of sales calls and when the researcher is not following the whole sales process, he's following the meeting, the one meeting that they're going with, mm -hmm. that is typically an initial meeting. They're not going to, you know, the closing meeting or the prospecting meeting to get the meeting. Yeah. That first call is a very different but yet friendly call because there's no real risk to the client other than their time. Yes. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I know we won't mention who that researcher is, but uh, there was a recent interview with this individual and he did reflect upon how much he would have changed the process and how much he's challenged his own observations if he were to rewrite that book again. So there's been a lot of changes. I, I People have read, when they've read Spin and they compared to you know, my concepts and my ideas and my book questions that sell, what they like about my process is that Whereas spin selling talks about the need to ask great questions. It doesn't share with you how, yeah, how, yeah. how, the how and that's where I get it. Important. Yeah, it so do, we get it now. Now, do you see a particular sequence is more effective? I'm sure there is, but. Uh, the, the see, well, I, one has to be here. That's a great question. And here's the problem. I don't want us to get into the mechanics of the questions because as we get pe people get exposed to my process, you know, describe for me, tell me, share with me, walk me, help me understand, you know, or, or, or compare and contrast. How's that compare? How do your thoughts compare to what others are thinking, saying, doing, or whatever? And it's more about being inquisitive, yeah. more being adaptable, listening, understanding for the clues. Now, this is something that is important. So I go, I think it's important to go with the flow because of the personality styles, how people are and gauging how far you can engage somebody. But here's a study done by Dartnell Research Institute, Institute a number of years ago. And this is about customers now, Brian, not prospects, customers. The percentage of time that they're telling you what is really on their mind. Take a guess what that might be. <laughs> I'd say 5%. Yeah, the percentage of time that they're telling, you're right, it's low. It's very low. Yeah. And it's about anywhere from 10 to 20% on average, what they're really telling you. on. They're, they're, they're guarded. They're protected. They're, they're, and it's why. There's a number of reasons, whether it's because of, it could be a lack of trust, lack of confidence, or you might exploit, you might, or they might be shopping around or in a negotiating mode or want to have some power, some control, host of reasons why people are not sharing what is on their minds. So here's my point. If we have, and these are customers, people we're already engaging, calling on, who are buying from us. And my point is, how can you really, how can you really sell, sell and deliver a value that's meaningful, impactful, and targeted and specific when people are so guarded and protected? So the whole premise of why I get into question and listening is because we have to take the relationship to a deeper, more meaningful level Yeah. and getting people to be honest and trusting and open. That's the key. Now I've kind of found uh, kinesthetic questions, feeling questions to get uh, both, both more alignment and more opening, uh, honest conversations going. Mm -hmm. and, and I've also found that the one-on-one -on -one is so much better than one-to-many. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for that. Um, you know, it, and, and it's, I like where you're going about the feeling because I'm always looking to say, how can we go to the emotions? But be we got to be careful here because there's some practitioners out there who are really like always about go for the pain, go for the pain. The, the challenge is customers are very savvy today. And they know when, if they think they're being manipulated or being exploited that, okay, I know you want to go, you want me to bleed. You want me to gush. You want me to open up. And I think there's a real danger there because it's, it's more about <clears throat> getting to the emotional drivers, whether they're trying to minimize risk, whether they're trying to gain a competitive edge, whether they're trying to grow and progress in their career, or they're trying to simplify their lives, get to the 
in the emotional driver is the key because if I can get to the emotional driver, I've gotten to the heart, the reasons why they need to buy and what the differentiator is. And it's going to make a difference in my solution. And you yeah, know what, Brian, people could, I don't want to do, I, I don't want salespeople to get into that feature benefit dump. That's it. And they're taught that. And they're, yes. you know, nobody teaches questioning skills in the first month at the job. They teach you the CRM and what the product does. Uh, Ryan, you were so right. How many of the time in, 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 have, have we come across an interview where they'll say, okay, you know, they'll say, here's a pen or here's a product. Now sell that for me. And why are people, salespeople hired? It's the gift of gap. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, how, does anybody hire say, let's see how good your listening is? in an interview. <laughs> it's not, that's not assessed in an interview. Yeah. I mean, the, the big thing today is coaching, but uh, I'm hearing a lot more the Ugh. curiosity that you brought up. And that curiosity is the, the driver from the yes. sales side of the questions. Yes. And, yes. And I'm kind of like, I like that you didn't come up with a formula or, you know, uh, you know, a list of questions as instead of, you know, how do you nurture that curious uh, characteristic of your personality? You see, that's the, and that's interesting. You say that because I have found, including myself of this, you know, that, you know, that beginner's luck in salespeople, you know, that, that, that salesperson, the first oh, one yeah. to on the job and they sell a killer opportunity and the seasoned people are like, Oh, that person do it. Yeah. And it's because they brought, you know what it is? That's what you new, just said. Yeah, a new look at the and and they probably tried stuff that other people would overlook. That's right. Salespeople, established seasoned salespeople come in with the assumptions. Already know, you know, they hear a hot button or a topic or something, and what do they do? Boom! They latch oh. onto it, start pounding, selling, trying to and I'm like, oh, stay in the inquisitive mode, be humble, and listen. Let the customer tell their story because their story is unique how they want to explain it. Even though you may think you know the story and you've heard it a thousand times, it's like, shut up. Yeah. Give yeah customer I, I hear one. too many reps wanting a script and I'm like, you know, you building your own script is one thing. Me or anyone giving you a script is a death nail because yes. what's going to happen when you fail? You're going to blame the script. You're not going to own it. You yes. Know, or be reflective. And, you know, because this is what, at least 50% art versus science. Yeah, you're right. And it's, um, I'm, you probably have seen that study. I think it was Harvard Business, Harvard School, um, Carnegie Mellon and University of Pittsburgh. And the, the three factors that determine a person's career success. And it's the three things are the skills, number one, skills, the ability to do the job. You know, that's communication. Um, the, the, the attitude is the other area, which is drive, motivation, passion. And then the third area is knowledge, product knowledge. And they talk about the three things that impact the person who's going to be successful versus someone's going to just going to kind of just go through the flow. And it's interesting because 85% of, of a person's career success is based on skills and attitudes and only 15% on the knowledge. And what is it too, too often salespeople think fall too much on the knowledge and i don't want to downplay the knowledge because you've got to have you know credibility to get your foot in the door you still need that small percentage <laughs> yes yes so but it's when we start to rely too much on it where it now starts to over it's you know it's like somebody who has a highly technical engineer and they get into the weeds well, and yeah Be that's because the problem you know, most salespeople spend the first five or 10 years looking for that silver bullet, that knowledge. That's right. They, they read the books and it's like, okay, you've got the knowledge. Are you practicing it? Are you taking uh, feedback? Are you trying it a little different? Are you applying it at the right time in the right way? And, and, and I think salespeople are ironically one of the most sensitive of professions where once they get that they get past that beginner's luck and they get some success that they then be, flip the switch from looking for knowledge to being a know-it-all and yeah. which is the death. Why is that though? Maybe because they know it all because it's in, you know, deep down we want to be recognized. We want to be appreciated and valued and feel important. And when yeah. we have that knowledge, we really hold on to it. It's an interesting observation you share because I, 
Yeah. I mean, it, and you see it all the time on LinkedIn where you get the salespeople arguing over the, the minutest little words and you're like, let it go. You know? Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. And I go back to that um, Dartnell Research Institute and it even validate what they said about uh, the percentage of time that customers are sharing you, with you what's on their minds. But they also took it further and the percentage of time that customers are actively actively listening to salespeople. You think it's high or low? <laughs> I'm betting it's pretty low. It's low. It's low. And yet what happens is, you see, you know, adults, adults have a way of, you know, playing along. I am too. We're all guilty of this. We'll nod our head. We'll smile. We'll be agreeable. Yeah. But you know, we're kind of like a little bit of glassy eyes or we're, we're doing two things, especially on webinars or, or on the phone. We can get away with it. Uh, we're multitasking, but we're going along. Uh huh. That's good. Oh yeah. That's interesting. Tell me more, but we're tuning out. And that's where, again, I, I say, I try to get salespeople to, you know, get to the point quicker, more efficiently and less is more. But the one I I'd always say, the one good litmus test of a good sales call is who did most of the talking. Yes. Talk to listen ratio. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's the, that's the premise. If this salesperson did most of the talking, eh, it probably is not a good call. Uh, hey, you, you're working on a new book, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yes. What's it all about? It's, it's called the ultimate sales pro. So the ultimate sales pro, and that's coming out next month, um, August, 2018, Harper Collins. And it's all about, uh, based on my experience over 25 years, out in the field and working with sales professionals and you know, on the 25 key uh, innovative ideas that they need to be doing to uh, be more successful today. Even though everything that's changed around us, whether it's the markets, the products, the services, the customers, you know, technology, everything that we have, there's some things, you know, what is it we can do more of, less of, and differently to be more successful and to continue that success. And what will people get out of the book? Uh, what they'll get out of the book uh, will be, for example, one example is sell slower in, in, a, in a world in which it's so fast paced. And because customers have instant access to information, there are some premises in which we need to slow down the conversation. And here, here's an example. We had a client um, six months ago, they reached out to me and they were, they, they, they literally had ownership of the marketplace inquiries would come in and somebody say, Hey, I need a, a quote on this particular instrument for our, our hospital research. Um, can you get me a quote? And, and what they would do is boom, send it out. Okay. It's $50,000 for this piece of equipment. And then what they, they reached out to me because they're like, you know what, here we have a captured audience. We have, mo you know, pretty much it's us and another competitor. And yet our close ratio is, is not good. And I, here's what I meant by selling slower. And it was like, okay, rather than being so efficient and responsive to impress the person with your, your uh, getting the quote to them, pick up the phone, yeah. <laughs> have a conversation, <laughs> talk to them, engage them. And yeah. it was just like, hey, I, you know, I want to make sure that what we propose to you, quote, that we, we present the right instrument to you. So wait a minute, before we go there, tell me a little bit about your research. Tell me about this project. What are you doing? What are you trying to accomplish? And they'd be having this half an hour conversation. This person, this, this scientist would be getting all animated and excited about their project, what they're doing, what they're hoping to accomplish, how they want to get some funding secured, this and that. And all the, they literally went from what I call a 20% closure rate to a 68% closure rate. Okay. Great. That's what I mean by selling slower. Cool. And where can they get the book? Amazon? Yeah, there'll be all the major bookstores, Amazon, Harper Collins Leadership. Yes, yes, everybody buys at Amazon now, don't they? They do. And where can they find you? Uh, they, they, PaulCherry.com, all one word. Cherry like the fruit, PaulCherry.com. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. So here, here's the magic word, feelings. If you put feel, feelings, into a question, what you're going to do is elicit an emotional response. That's the level we want to get to. We want to break through the logic and get to the emotion. Why? Because the logic is per, is guarding 
the emotion. And it's at that emotional level that everyone makes a decision, whether they admit it or not. Think about what do you have for dinner? What do people, what do you feel like? And some people say, what are you hungry for? But if you really want to get to what they want, what do you feel? Are you feeling it? All, everything comes down to that kinesthetic emotion. When we wake up, what do you feel like? Anybody who's a runner knows that very rarely do you wake up and say, you know what, I'd love to go out in the nice, cold, dark weather and, and do about five miles. You know, I, who wants this nice, warm pillow? <laughs> who wants these nice, warm blankets? I, I want to get outside. Look, it's raining. Excellent. I can get wet. <laughs> I can get a little cold. Nobody nobody really wakes up that way. You know, you might get up and you want to get a start on the day. I get it. I've had those days too. But most of the time, eh, not so much. Oh, who wants to get into that shower? Oh, we'll just roll over, right? That, that's how we feel. So what you want to do is get to that emotional level with your clients, not overtly, meaning you don't start there. You, you warm them up and then you get a closing question of how does this make you feel? It cuts right to the core. And if you stick at the logical level, you're going to get polished, politically correct, logical answers, but not truthful answers. That's the difference. If you get to the kinesthetic, the emotional level, you'll get a sense of what they're thinking. So I hope you enjoyed that interview. Hey, to give you an update on the classes, uh, we've been doing office hours and they're gold. So every week uh, per class, so it's every other week uh, for an individual class, office hours gives everybody the opportunity to ask any question they have. They can ask questions in between and I turn around and make a video response to them. I put it in the course. So this is not just a course of videos at all. It's a structured sequence with somebody to help you constantly for a year. It's about improving your game. So I have a question for you. How would you feel if you could double your income? See that question? That's pretty powerful. Let me, let me ask you another question. Are you making too much money? Do you have too much money? I'm starting a financial advice podcast for those of you who have too much. And I'll give you my address and you can send me a check to alleviate that pressure of having too much money. Joking. Yes, of course I'm joking. My point is, if you don't have that problem, if you if your bank isn't calling yet saying, hey, enough already, no more checks, then you need these courses. Why? Because the game is changing. The world is changing. And here it is. We're at the, almost the end of July 2018. The year's coming to an end. You're like, what? I just got sunburned. Hey, you got to get in the game. And the game has changed. And if you're not booked every week with fresh new opportunities, if you're not winning like at 80%, if you do not understand exactly what an A-level account looks like to you, if you do not understand your process, your steps, what is going to go wrong and how you can prevent it and what your competitors are telling your prospects right now while you're listening to the podcast, drop those earbuds, call them. I'll tell you what they're telling you. Eh, I'll put it in the course. That's enough about the course. Check it out at b2brevenue.com. Don't send me an email asking me the URL. It's in the show notes. It's in the title. B2B Revenue. That's what we want. Revenue. B2brevenue.com. Ingrain that in your brain. It's on my LinkedIn profile if you get lost. Uh, are we connected on LinkedIn? Are we? Is that a hard question? Let's get connected, okay? Come on. Also, I'm dropping a funny video every day at the podcast uh, page on LinkedIn. So the Brutal Truth uh, page, like a company page on LinkedIn. So if you could follow that, you'll get to see a funny video every day. I appreciate that. Also, make sure you're checking out the B2B Revenue Leadership Podcast. There I'm talking about leaders. Get to know some of these leaders. And what we're finding is the front door into a new account is the most crowded. It is the most pounded on. And that's why it's the most guarded. And that's why we don't go in the front door. Let your competition bang on the front door. We get invited in. Hey, Brian, come on in. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. 
That's how we roll here at The Brutal Truth. So get into that. Make sure you're checking out nudge.ai. Okay, that's how we figure out who to go after and what they care about. Pipedrive.com. Brutal Truth is the coupon code to get a month free of the professional version. Get it. Try it. Why do I need my own CRM? I got this thing I can't stand using it at the office. That's why. That is why. You want your email integrated with your CRM, have all those contact information all updated. So if, God forbid, things change, you hit the ground running. Your value is your network. It's your history. It's your context. This idea that just because you've been in sales 5, 10, 20, 50, 500 years no longer matters. It actually can be a deficit. If you don't show up for the interview, being able to show them a process, an ability, the capability of really saying, this is my ecosystem. This is how I work. This is my daily routine. That's how you blow away a hiring manager. So make sure you're checking out those products. Also, co-video. What? You're doing text vid- text email? <laughs> What year is this? This is 2018. We don't send text emails anymore. Video, baby. I'm all about video, and video is the place I am in 2018. Over on YouTube uh, as well, I put funny videos there. I do my walk and talks. Are you on Instagram? Are you on the IG? Okay, no bikini shots, but I will do a walk and talk about sales daily. Brian G. Burns, no underscore, no dashes, no spaces. Brian G. Burns has two accounts up there. There's one with the underlines, no, nothing funny there. The one with no underlines, that's me. Okay, they both look like me, but only one is really me. One will have the videos. I drop a video every day of a little bit of nuggets, a little bit of gold. My, my most recent one is give up on the hard work and do the hard work. That that distinction will make you a million dollars. Appreciate you listening. Tell somebody about the brutal truth. Make sure you enter the contest between now and the end of August. All you have to do is take a screenshot of the podcast, post it on LinkedIn. Super simple. Go on YouTube if you can't figure it out. And then tag a bunch of salespeople. Whoever gets the most comments, not likes, not views, comments. Why comments? Because it's the most viral element on LinkedIn. By the end of August, I don't know if it's a 30th or a 31st, wins $150 Amazon gift card from me. So make sure you tag me so I can see it. So I know I, who to send the money to. I've got too much money. Oh, not yet. See you next time.